What's up, people? Happy Sunday. I just got out of church a few minutes ago and um, received a good word from the Lord. Definitely feeling pretty good right now. God is um, God convicted me about something personally, and um, you know, and I definitely wanted to see what's up with everyone. Is everyone doing? So I'm over here at a Starbucks just for a little while before I head home. The usual. <clears throat> I haven't been on Facebook Live in a while, but I guess Facebook Live doesn't change. <laughs> it's been a few minutes since I've been on here. More than a few minutes. It's probably been a. I think it's been like about a week or two, actually. I haven't been on Facebook Live, so. Yeah, I figured I'd come on a little bit, talk about happiness, just wait a few minutes. But as usual, Facebook, like I said, doesn't change. When I first came on here, there was eight people, and then it went right down to two. <laughs> so, which actually ties into my message, actually, which I'll get to share in a minute. Because I'm not going to let the circumstances um, decide for me what my mood should be, whether I should be happy or whether I should be sad. Um, so I know this is a small sample size, but I shouldn't, um, like I came on here feeling good, and just because, you know, quickly there was a bunch of people and then quickly it went off, you know, even though that's disappointing and that's actually what I'm about to get into, it shouldn't change the outcome of my spirit and my heart because true happiness comes from God and, um, you know, not from our circumstances. So anyway, uh, just wait a few minutes, guys. Tell me how you're doing. Say what's up. Talk to me. Talk to me. Say hello. Um, haven't been on here in a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'll get started with the message of happiness. Or um, I guess I already did get started, so I guess I'll I'll just continue then. Um, so what I feel God is um, put in my heart um, is that when we as Christians, I'll speak to the, I'll address the Christians <clears throat> to the non-believers. I'll get to that in a second to those that don't believe in God, that don't believe in Jesus. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. <coughs> um, to the people that do believe in Jesus, like myself, um, I feel like God has put this on my heart tonight. Um, when we grieve the Holy Spirit, um, and we do things that are contrary to God's will, and we do things like willfully lust, and willfully get angry, and willfully... Um, you know, uh, be vengeful or willfully try to demand our way or be selfish and we do things that we know are against the God who made us and we don't walk in his love or we don't um, respect him or fear him um, in reverence and we willfully do stuff. I know myself what happens is the Holy Spirit is still within us. When you believe in Jesus, Jesus, I believe, will always be with us to the end of time um, forever and ever. Um, after this life and forevermore. Um, however, um, you know, even though he'll always be with us by his blood, because if you believe in Jesus, it's not by works, it's by his blood, we're saved forever. Um, the thing is, is that when we, um, when we grieve the Holy Spirit, I know me personally, when I do things that are against God, whether it's getting angry or lustful, whatever it might be, um, the joy that um, God brings, the, the excitement He brings, the power He brings, the healing He brings, the comfort He brings, the revelation He brings is withheld from us. Hence, the enemy comes and plays with our minds and plays with our lives. And without the fully functioning Holy Spirit, um, this could be a very miserable walk. And that's why I think for so long, so many people have said to me over the years, and even to myself, you know, because when I'm not the jolly cat as Vinny, I've been very depressed and miserable and suffered for many years. And, you know, as the jolly cat, yes, I love to be a jolly character as an actor. And um, I'm not going to say none of it is organic or real from my own personal, uh, my own personality. But most of the time when I do the jolly cat, it's a performance. It's a character that I betray and I become this character. But as a person, unfortunately, I do struggle with depression. I have struggled with 
um, anxiety and different things and anger and, and just feelings of guilt and, and rejection and all this stuff. And I really believe it has to do with, um, even though I believe in Jesus and even though I'm bold for Christ and I love God and I'm on a mission for Him, I feel that these offenses that I commit and these things that I do against God, um, even though I might justify them, oh, I'm single and I'm not married and if I lust or this person, you know, they wronged me so they got to know that I'm an actor, I'm not a bum and I'm going to tell them where to go. So when I do these willful sins, God is still there, but what happens is that joy and that presence is removed. So when we obey Christ to the Christian, when we obey God and we let his spirit do the work in us, because as we know, it's not a work that we do, but yet a work that Jesus does. And as we let Jesus do this work in us and let the Holy Spirit cleanse us and heal us and give us peace and joy and we resist the enemy, as the Bible says, he will flee. Then we have an overwhelming presence of joy and grace that no matter what our circumstances are like, you know, it could be the worst of circumstances and we're going to give God the glory. We're going to find joy in it, you know, and it could be the best of circumstances and we're going to praise God or if we're miserable and we're not walking in the Lord, we're not obeying Him, we're not letting the Holy Spirit do the work, then we're always going to complain, we're always going to murmur. Even during times of greatness, we're going to look for things, and especially when times are bad, we're going to complain. You know, like right now, you know, it went down again to two people, and perhaps Mr. Phil is right. I'm talking about Jesus, and most people got out of here. You know, I just had a few people here, so... I have a choice to make, you know, I titled this message, Happiness is a Choice. Is it upsetting that it might be correct that once people figured out I'm talking about God, they got out? Yes, that's correct. Is it disappointing? Yes, life is going to be disappointing. Um, life is not perfect. There's always going to be things that upset us. There's always going to be things we can learn from, etc. But I have a choice right now for the next few minutes while I'm here until I go. If God has given me joy through the Holy Spirit and He's convicting me and teaching me, if I come on here to share a message that doesn't go good or people don't like it, I have a choice to still remain happy in God's love. Or I could respond to the negativity. I could respond to what's going on in the circumstances and say, you know what? Screw everybody. I don't understand why people leave, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Not only is it not going to change anything, my joy is going to be taken away. So we have a choice in life, in our circumstances, to either let God fill us with his joy and let that love resonate in us and obey that joy, obey God, or we can just complain and murmur and disobey God and offend the Holy Spirit. And then that power and that love, I believe, will be withheld from us. So, you know, that's the beginning of the word. What's up, everybody? Um... You know, um, how's everyone doing? How's everyone's evening going? Did you go to church today, guys? Um, next week, Tony, I'd like you to come visit, all right? If you can, it'd be great. Um, it was a great church service, good word, good worship. I love the worship. I go to every nation church in Union Square. It's awesome. I love it. And, uh, you know, actually, um, there's a story even there, you know, and it's still going, the story, because, you know, I, I went there periodically throughout the past couple of years, and I had a couple of un unfortunate happenings where I let my anger get the best of me and sensitivity and et cetera, and boom, you know, I just lashed out. And, you know, even lashing out is almost like an addiction. You know, we talk about being addicted to food. We talk about being addicted to drugs. We talk about being addicted to this, being addicted to that. But you know something? I believe personally that we could be addicted to lashing out. I believe there's an adrenaline rush that we get from it, even though we know it's psychological, actually, because we know that when we get angry, I know that when I've gotten angry, I know that this lashing out is not going to do any good. I'm going to regret it later. I'm going to push people away. It offends God. It offends people. It's not going to make anything better, but it's so powerful, like a drug, that when we, I know for those that deal with anger, I'm sure anger management must talk about it, if I had a guess, because when we get angry and we say, oh, who do you think you are? And we let things out it's almost like um like a power rush we feel in that moment like we're letting that person know like we're, we're, we're telling them what's really up and, and and we're being bold and yeah we're putting them in their place and we're expressing and you're not going to put us down and you know and unfortunately when we do that it offends god 
It's not forgiving. It's not a place of love. It's not a place of joy. And, um, and it just makes things horrible. You know, and uh, when I went to this church, unfortunately, over the past couple years, I got angry um, quite a few times. And um, recently, about four months ago, I tried to, you know, go back and show them that I'm through Christ. I'm trying to learn from that, just like on here, on Facebook. And um, little by little, they're starting to welcome me as a family and praise God for that. Um, you know, so... You know, like right now, to the one person watching, possibly it's Tony. You don't think this is a trying moment for me? I mean, it's not the end of the world, but hey, there was eight people here, five people here. I'm expressing my heart. I believe I'm sharing a good message. And there's only one person watching. So, you know, am I supposed to now, this is like a test. Am I supposed to now say, you know what? F Facebook. I'm done with Facebook. Screw everybody. No, that's not God's will. Easier said than done, but I'm, I got to let the Holy Spirit say, you know what? You did your job. Perhaps people don't want to hear the truth. Perhaps they don't want to watch you, whatever the reason is. Pray for them. Forgive them. Finish this video. Finish your message and go on with your night. You know, And but the, the addiction is with anger is that when we get angry, we want to let it out. We want to scream. We want to show the people how we feel. We we feel like there's a validation there. Like, who do you, like, you know, let's say people put down the jolly cat. That's not funny. That's stupid. That's retarded. I want to validate it. I want to say, who the F do you think you are? Do you know how many people I've made laugh? Do you know what God has given me? Do you know blah, blah, blah? And all that does is it's haughty. It's haughty. It's unrighteous. It's not forgiving. It's not love. And you know what? It, it's not good because these people are still going to think what they want to think. It's not going to change their mind. And it's not, it's not, and it's not going to show any love to the human being and, and it's just going to make me more upset so <clears throat> so that's the um you know situation you know um you know i realized that facebook is actually not my platform anymore i mean thank you for the few viewers you know praise god i, I you know i'll stay on a few more minutes but i'm realizing that you know what also in life um, we have to be adaptable. We have to we have to grow as humans. We have to trust God, but we also have to be adaptable. You know, God. The Bible says that Jesus works everything out for good uh, for those that love Him and are called according to His purpose. So even this, okay, I messed up. I made some scenes on Facebook. People are leaving, but you know what? It's fine. This is not my platform any longer. Uh, I'm now. I don't know if you guys know. If you have Instagram, I'm now using Instagram. I've done a, um, a few shows there. Perhaps I'll go there in a few minutes. And um, you have to be adaptable to different platforms, different things. And, um, <clears throat> you know, recently, <clears throat> you have to go to where, I don't know if any of you guys are sailors or if you ever, um, you know, sail, sail a boat. I've never, but I can imagine Tony has. I think it's a great analogy. Perhaps it will speak to him. You got to go with the wind. I mean, obviously, there's certain things you do, but you got to go with the breeze. You got to, you can't go against it. And right now, if the breeze is telling me, "Hey, Facebook Live," you know, go on it here and there. Be, be grateful for the few people you have. But if the breeze is blowing towards Instagram, and why do I say that? Well, I don't know if you guys know. A few days ago, I made a post about how the girl from um, the Housewives of New Jersey celebrity, um, what's her name, uh, Jacqueline Lorita, she saw me perform in Water Like a Duck, she was laughing, the friends loved it, they loved it, and what they do, they went, she commented on, on one of my videos, she followed me, and the next day she shared my video, and 40 something thousand people, so now I have more people on Instagram, more people are, are messaging me every day and telling me they want me to go live, so to me that's a sign from God, and that's the wind blowing in that direction, that Facebook Live is no longer um, the platform for the most part, so in a situation like this, I try to show grace, finish the message, be thankful for a few people, still have some happiness, and be adaptable to what is happening. Instead of, you know, oh, you know, how dare you guys all leave me? Because what's so psychological about that is, in the past when I've done it, it's not only is it not good to get angry, but the people who left are not even here. So I'm, I'm, I'm yelling at people who actually are still staying around. So for instance, let's say right now I started snapping out. I'm like, you know, who the F do you guys think you are? There's only two people here before there was eight. I'm wasting my time because the people who left are not gonna hear that. They're already gone. 
the people that are here, even though it's upsetting, at least they stayed the two people. So, you know, sometimes I think, you know, it's also about wisdom. And it might sound cliche, but I believe wisdom is something that we really, really need to pray for. Wisdom and discernment. We need to be wise about situations. We need to be content. And, and I believe it all comes from letting the Holy Spirit do the work in us. And instead of grieving the Holy Spirit, work with the Holy Spirit. So that takes time, obviously. So Lord Jesus, help us, Lord Jesus, to commune with you, to work with you. Help fill us with your joy. Help us to have happiness, Lord Jesus. That happiness is not something that's a result of something. That happiness, rather, there is a choice, Lord Jesus. So I choose today, and I pray that my viewers, whoever they are, two or four or ten, I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will choose to be happy in you no matter what. And may you guide us and lead us in your joy, in your bliss, in your great happiness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, you know, um, I had something else I was going to say. I'm trying to think. Um, you know, I mean, listen, there are a lot of things that are going to happen to us. Amen. And, you know, God, I believe, allows things to happen to us. You know, um, and I believe you look at the story of Joseph, my pastor preached about it tonight. And, uh, you know, one of my pastors and Joseph who was called by God, fulfilled the great vision of God, went through severe, you know, tr uh, severe trial. His brothers put him in slavery. But when it was all said and done, not only was Joseph loyal and then God lifted him up eventually, but God actually said to his brothers that he thanked the brothers because God used them for a purpose. So sometimes when things go haywire, it's easier said than done. God is allowing that thing to happen to us because it's going to make us seek Him. It's going to make us change. It's going to make us surrender. Because if everything just goes according to our plan, then maybe we're never going to change. And then eventually we're going to come to destruction. So, you know, it, 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 it could be, that could be used for just about anything in life. You know, a relationship, um, a platform, a career, anything. You know, we have to really um, submit to God's love and His power and grace and find contentment in Jesus. You know, and not in the things that make us happy, but rather in the Christ who gives us the things. It's the Christ who gives us happiness. If we are blessed with something, God gives us that. We praise him for that. But the things alone don't make us happy. It's Jesus that makes us happy. Um, <clears throat> you know, you know, I was going to make a joke. I was going to say, look, I'm not the most good looking guy. I kind of have like kind of a weird looking face, especially when I'm not performing. You know, when I get into character, I utilize it. And I'm like, you know, and I, I, I play the character of the Jolly Cat. But just me as a human being talking, my eyes are kind of droopy. I kind of look a little weird. So, you know, that has something to do with it, you know. So people come on live. Listen, let's be real. Some of it is vanity. But what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to get upset, get angry? Or just say, you know what, Jesus, you love me. You find me beautiful. You know, because, look, you see a lot of these people on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And a lot of, like, beautiful girls and even guys, they have nice smiles and they look great. And they got 100 people watching. And they got 200 likes But you know something That's not what matters You know it's really It sounds cliche But it's really about substance You know And about becoming a vehicle Of, of You know A purpose um, So You know it is what it is You know um, So Raymond Raymond Moore You're watching Because if you're watching I wanted to Actually say to you That Um, um I have an idea for a web series, <clears throat> and I wanted to see if we could talk about it. I know we had almost uh, did a few things in the past, but I really feel God's been putting it on my heart. So, you know, let me know if you're watching, all right? Um, and, um, yeah, any questions about what I'm talking about before I think I wrap this up? You know, just to go over what I said, um, you know, 
happiness is not something that we wait for a situation. So in other words, um, if someone says to me, Vinny, are you happy? I have a choice. I'm going to say, no, I'm not happy. Of course I'm not happy. My career is nowhere. Girls reject me. People reject me. I'm all alone. I have no family. I struggle with this. I struggle with that. I'm not happy. When I get married, then I'll be happy. When my career takes off, then I'll be happy. No. Happiness is a choice. I choose to let the Holy Spirit give me happiness. I choose to let Jesus do a work in me and Him give me happiness. And then with that happiness, I do great things. And as I said before, I think a big reason why me personally and many of us Christians, um, we're not happy is because we're grieving the Holy Spirit with willfully sinning. Um, we are doing things that are contrary to His Word. And even though He's not forsaken us with His love, the joy and power he brings is being is being withheld. Hence, the enemy is attacking, and we're staying in a state of misery. And not only are we missing out on God's best, but when worldly people see us and we're miserable instead of having joy, they think that God's not real. What we have is phony. So we need to get to a place where we stop offending the Holy Spirit, let Jesus do a work in us, let him heal us, let him love us, and as we obey him, he'll give us fullness of joy, fullness of grace, and then we'll be able to not only have that joy, but do great things through him, and then other people will see his love in us and the happiness that he gives us. Easier said than done, but I pray that we could all have that. Now, to, to those that um, don't believe in Jesus, don't believe even in God, um, I believe with all my heart You do not have any happiness I believe with all my heart Before I conclude here I believe that your happiness Is external It is not from The, the rivers of God's grace It is not from the well of love in Christ It is not from inside It is not from the love of Jesus Living within you <clears throat> I believe that inside Without Christ Without God in our lives we are wounded, and we may cover those wounds with, with popularity, with women, with men, with um, passion for um, even creativity. Listen, even though creativity is a great thing, creativity in itself and passion and a job and money and all these things could be used by God, but in itself, it may make us feel happy, but that happiness is external inside, and it's not inside out. And I believe that truly inside, we are not happy unless Jesus is what is flowing within so um hence why we have to keep on going from one thing to the next so um any questions anybody so i'm glad to be back same old people that come on and leave and you know it's, you got to kind of laugh at it i guess you know Laugh at it and praise God and, and just move on. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> um, that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> wow. So... What do you think about them Knicks? I didn't watch the game, but um, man, I heard that they made it to the fourth quarter. I mean, I'm sorry. They went to four overtimes, and they still found a way to lose. Isn't that crazy? That had to be a heartbreaking game to watch. I mean, it's just they really needed this win. If anyone follows basketball, the Knicks, man, what a tough game. I didn't even watch it. I just heard. Um Sorry, Eddie. I don't. I don't do things for attention, Eddie. Um, th no, thank you. Um, maybe you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. <clears throat> I'm over here talking about something. Um, perhaps you missed it. You can watch. But um, I don't do things for attention. I I use attention to entertain people, but I don't do anything for attention. The attention that I I get, I use to either give God the glory, bring joy to people, and laughter and a message and as an entertainer but I believe people that just scream in public or do stupid things I believe that's why I don't watch those um, those shows where they do those quote unquote pranks although there's some humor in it um, my sense of humor what I do is the jolly cat is more about authentic entertainment than screaming but ah no no <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs>
How you doing, man? Hey, uh, <coughs> by the way, um, I'm the Jolly Cat. And I love you. I love you. <laughs> How you doing? I like your hair. Nice, nice style. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, I don't need to do things like that. <clears throat> For what? It wouldn't matter anyway. It's still the same three people watching, whether I scream or not, even though it's against my principle. So what's the difference? All right, guys. So in conclusion, thanks for listening to those that listened. If you want to go back and watch again, before I go, do you have any questions, guys? I'm going to, if you have an Instagram, go on Instagram. I'm going to go on Instagram before I go. Um, all right, guys, I'm pretty much done here. Facebook Live is no longer my platform, and praise God for that, because God is good. There's different seasons. And as I said before, we can't let our circumstances dictate our happiness, but let Jesus dictate our happiness. And I'll say it again for those that are just joining in. I reiterate one more time. If we're grieving the Holy Spirit and we're doing things that are against God, then God won't withhold His love, but the joy and power that He brings will be withheld. Hence, we won't be happy Christians and we won't be joyful and then we will not have the life that God wants us to have, having the joy that we have so others can see and most of all, we can enjoy the bliss that God gives us. So if we want to be blissful, we want to be happy, we have to repent in the name of Jesus by His grace and we have to start obeying the Holy Spirit instead of grieving the Holy Spirit. Um, so I say that personally and um, that's the message of tonight. May God's blessing fill you and bless you tonight as we obey in the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.